I'm Cynthia Jean from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm a breast cancer survivor. This is my story. I was born and raised in the best city in the world, from Brooklyn, New York, baby. <laughs> My parents are from Haiti. I was born here. I come from a close-knit family, very supportive of everything that I've done. I uh, went to school right here in the neighborhood. I went to Holy Family School, a Catholic school, where I started my faith journey, which later I didn't know was going to be useful to me in the future. I also was very active and loved to play sports. I ran track and field, played tennis and also did a little bowling. I loved to like smile when I was growing up, having fun, and being there with my family. I went to school at Hofstra University, where I got my bachelor's degree in sociology and a master's of social work at Adelphi University. Uh, it was 2014 when I felt something was wrong. I started to gain weight. I was tired all the time. And then a lump showed up. I'm a person that I don't like to take things lightly. So I called my GYN and made an appointment to check the lump and make sure everything was okay. I went and while I was waiting in the office uh, to see the doctor, I was nervous, worried. My hands were shaking and my feet were shaking. I was sweaty because I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping for the best, but bracing for the worst. When the doctor walked in, he had small talk. It was small talk more than usual. I'm thinking, hey, I want to know my results. So I cut the small talk. And when he finally gave me my results and told me that I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer and it's the aggressive type, I was shocked. I mean, 33 and you hear you have breast cancer. I didn't even start my family yet. I just started in my career as a social worker. I'm like, no, this can't be happening. You know, as he left and gave me a moment, I just couldn't hold back the tear of the emotion. Even now, I was just, I'm just thankful that I overcame it. But at that time, it was just very devastating that I had to do that chapter. The most difficult part was sharing with it with my family and telling them, hey, I have breast cancer. I told them you know, in a nice, fun way uh, it, it was funny because of my age, everyone thought I was going to tell them, hey, I'm pregnant, but <laughs> uh, they didn't know it was the opposite. The hardest person to tell was my dad. I mean, I was daddy's little girl. I'm the youngest, so of course I'm spoiled and get the attention and always from my dad. And what made it difficult to tell my dad is that he would worry even if I had a cold. And I remember telling him I need to go get some Formula 44 all the time. And to tell him I had breast cancer, didn't know how he was going to take it. My father was diagnosed with early dementia. So I didn't want to share that with him because I didn't want to add more stressors and made it worse. And was difficult. I, mean, I remember my dad suspecting that something was wrong and 
not sharing. And then he'd be like, I'm the father. You're, I'm supposed to know what's going on. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Everything's okay. He was like, I'm the father. I brought you in this world. I'm supposed to be part of that. And I remember telling him, you know, dad, there's, you don't need to worry. You know, everything is okay. And, and it was just like hard to tell him because I didn't want to break his heart because it was a lot. Preparing for the journey for treatment was very crucial in overcoming it. One of the things I do as a social worker is that you do your research and find out what you're up against. And preparing for that, I look to see what the treatments were consist of, what it was going to take, is it true from all the rumors and all the things that I've heard of, of losing your hair, getting weight or losing weight. And I wanted to be prepared for what I was going to encounter. The treatment options to me uh, were available to me was chemo, radiation, and surgery. But to go with the best options, what type of chemo and surgery was uh, based on genetic testing. Uh, genetic testing, if you had it in your family, they want you to go the drastic route, mastectomy, uh, removing your breasts. And again, I'm young, so hearing that I gotta remove my breasts was uh, devastating and hard to cope with. And because I did the genetic testing, it came out negative, I didn't have to do that because it wasn't something in my family. So I decided to do a lumpectomy, which is just removing the tumor where the cancer was and also in my lymph nodes, I had it underneath my arms. The type of breast cancer that I had was very aggressive, so they really wanted to treat it very aggressively too. So I had chemo first to shrink the tumor, I had, and then I removed the surgery, I had surgery to remove the tumor, and then I had a radiation. But I was very happy with the plastic surgeon that we just did reconstruction to my breasts and that, that I got to keep that because being a young woman having started my family it was a big concern and also how I would look and feel as a woman because you grew up with them and parting with them is a little difficult but I was very happy with the option of treatment that I was offered. It's connected to my vein right here too so this is where it is so when they put the medication in jet it blood flows the injection surgeon here and then here. During the treatment after chemo therapy, I would rest and then I would go to the gym and work out with Johnny, my trainer. Uh, he encouraged me to come every day, even I was tired, rest, come, because when you work out, you have endorphins and endorphins make you happy. So I wouldn't be depressed. It was giving me something to do, but also knowing that cancer wouldn't have me and that I had cancer. So exercising helped me a lot to overcome the journey and saying that my life is still continuing and it doesn't stop. Family planning is very important. I'm 33, I'm still young, and that's something that I was looking forward to. And working with my doctors, especially my oncologist, Dr. Killian, working together to preserve my fertility and to make sure that I was still being treated and getting the right care that I need to, to have that option uh, made me feel so much better. I had a great treatment team that really provided me support with everything that I was doing and just made me feel more comfortable to overcome this journey.
today, my journey, I can say proudly I am cancer free and I'm a cancer warrior. <laughs> I overcame it and now I use my platform to share my story, to encourage other people to be proactive in their health, being aware of their body, eating right, nutrition, and also empower women that you can overcome anything you put your mind to and just being active.